Now we're going to go ahead and solve part C and part D. So for part C, we need to first find the expected value of x. And then the formula for expected value is equal to x itself multiplied by the probability density function. And in the case of the wave function, this is going to be the probability density function. And in the last video, we found that the square of the modulus of the wave function is equal to this expression over here. So we're just going to apply this directly. And then immediately this, you can notice that we can do some preliminary simplifications. So x multiplied by xi naught squared, this is just going to be equal to 0. So in the last problem, we call it in problem 2.12. So you can uh, in that problem, we found the expected value of x and the expected value of p and all a bunch of other expected values for the nth stationary state. And then you can see that this is just um, multiplying x by this expression over here. This is just finding the expected value of x for n equal to 0. And the same goes for here. This is just uh, the expected value of x for n equal to 1. And in the last problem, we found that this is always going to be equal to 0. So we can essentially just ignore these two terms. So what we have in the end is this term over here. So we can also pull out the cosine omega t because it's not related to x. So if x times xi naught xi1 dx. So in order to find our answer, now we have to solve this integral over here. And one way to solve this integral is to apply the alternative formulation of x. So recall we can also express x in such a way. So we can just apply this formula directly and you'll see that it can save us a bit of time from the calculations. So you have, first you have all these constants over here. And so we have a plus applied to xi naught, and then we also have a minus applied to xi naught times xi1 dx. So by definition, this is going to be equal to zero. So if you lower the lowest uh, energy state, if you lower it even further, you're just going to get zero. So by definition, this is going to be equal to 0. And for a plus xi naught, we're going to use this formula over here. So we call that in our earlier derivations, a plus xi n, this is equal to n plus 1 xi square root of n plus 1 plus, uh, times xi n plus 1. So that means this is going to be equal to 1 times xi 1. So in the end, combined with this term over here, you get something that looks like this. So first you have all these constants, and then you have this square root sign over here, your cosine omega t, and then in the end you have this integral from negative infinity to infinity xi1 squared dx. So this is xi, xi1 squared dx. And then this of course is equal to 1 because the xi1 is normalized. So that's why we see that the expected value of x is equal to 24 divided by 25 divided by h bar 2m omega cosine omega t. So this is the expected value of x. Now we're going to move on to find the expected value of p, and we just apply this formula. So we need to take the derivative of the expected value of x, and this should be rather simple. So the only t term over here in this expression is the cosine omega t. So differentiating this, we get omega, so cosine, becomes a negative sine omega t. So there's an extra omega here because of uh, the chain rule. And here you see the, this m and this omega. We can just rationalize this, or partially rationalize this square root over here. So we get this expression. Don't forget the negative sign, and then sine omega t. So this is the expected value of momentum. So with these two answers, essentially we've finished part C. But then again, in part C, we're also asked to check this one uh, theorem. We're being asked to check that, to verify that this relationship is indeed true for the case of the harmonic oscillator. So let's do that as well. So taking the derivative of the expected value of p. So once again, we can just retain all these constants over here. So we have m omega h bar divided by 2. So we just differentiate sine omega t. So of course we get this omega because of the chain rule. And the sine becomes a cosine. So sorry about that. So cosine omega t. 
So this is what the left hand side is equal to. So now let's see if the right hand side agrees with what we just found over here. So in the case of the harmonic oscillator, the potential is equal to 1 half m omega square x squared. And of course we can just pull out these constants. And then, so this is an x, this is a very bad handwriting. So we have this derivative of x of x squared. So this become, just becomes 2x, right? So differentiating x squared just becomes 2x. And you can just cancel this out. So this is equal to negative m omega squared times the expected value of x. And as we have found, the expected value of x is equal to this expression here. So we can just substitute, substitute that straight in. So h bar divided by m 2m omega times cosine omega t. So now we can just do a slight bit of rearranging. So I'm going to put one of these m's and omegas inside this square root over here. So we get m omega h bar divided by 2. So there's still 1 omega hanging on the outside. I'm going to put it here. And you can see that this is exactly equal to this term over here. So this theorem checks. So it is indeed true. So that's just part C. So now we're going to finish part D over here. And part D is actually pretty straightforward. So we call that for a wave function, it is equal to a linear combination of all the other stationary states. So we have these constants C and set in such a way such that the initial condition is going to be satisfied. And then recall that in the, pre in the previous section uh, concerning the infinite the infinite uh, the infinite square well, uh, David Griffiths proved that the probability that you will get the energy level of the nth state is equal to cn squared. And so we can use this result to help us solve part D. Part D is asking us what is the probability we would find uh, the different energy levels. And in this case, uh, we know that there are only two energy levels. And that is the E0, which is equal to 1 half h bar omega, and E1, which is equal to 3 over 2 h bar omega. And we know this because in the previous problem, we found that C0 is equal to 3 over 5, C1 is equal to 4 over 5, and all the subsequent Cs, they're all equal to 0. So by applying this formula, this is the probability of getting the nth energy state. So obviously, you can see that the probability of getting E2, E3, all the way to E infinity, they're all 0. And the probability of getting the zero station, uh, the energy level of the zero stationary state is equal to C naught squared. In this case, it's equal to 9 over 25. And the same thing happens for the first uh, energy level. So that's just C1 squared. And in this case, it's equal to 16 over 25. So these are your probabilities for part D.